All right. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing just fine, Douglas. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. As I mentioned before we got on, and I don't want to embarrass you again, but you do bear a resemblance to Judy Collins. <laughs> I've never been told that before. Nobody's ever and said I, that. I mean, you have like no. the same blue eyes and the kind of shape of your face. And oh, that's really. nice. Just, just don't ask me to sing. <laughs> OK, so thank you for coming on. Um, I was reading your bio. Very interesting. You're a genetic researcher. Yes. OK, did you have any uh, is that related to COVID at all or is it different? Uh, it is different. I, I had a long research career at the University of California, Irvine. Um, researching different human genetic diseases such as muscular dystrophy and Huntington's disease and identifying the mutations that cause those disorders. So I certainly understand genetics and I understand this COVID virus and I understand the vaccine that thankfully is just now being approved. And I'm, I'm very confident in it. OK, I mean, I'm not a scientist. Science was not one of my strong suits in school. Mm -hmm. But what you were doing was not, I guess, virology and genetics are different. Yes, they are. But viruses are oftentimes comprised of bits of genetic material as well as other uh, different molecules. So this particular virus is just uh, uh, an, M uh, an mRNA virus that's um, surrounded by this this uh, capsule that we've all seen, this protein capsule that has the spike proteins. Okay. So virology is different. Certainly the science of virology is different, but it does incorporate genetics. <clears throat> so they overlap a little bit, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. And then you're also an author and... How long have you been writing? Well, uh, Double Blind is actually my debut novel. I worked, as I said, at the University of California for 25 years. And I was unfortunately diagnosed after that time with ovarian cancer. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I am absolutely fine now. It's been years and years later. So they caught it early and I feel very fortunate about that. But at the time, I thought I had better just take a step back and take care of my health, uh, which I did. And then I thought, well, what can I do moving forward? I could either go back and continue on my research path or try something new. So I thought, hmm, I'll just write a book. And of course, it's much more involved than that. <laughs> but yeah, I probably <laughs> I had a, a a great time doing it, and um, so this is this is the product of 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 what I have been doing the last mm, four or five years. So it came out of just sort of a therapeutic necessity, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I thought. Well, when I just. You know, I love doing research. I have always been a research groupie. So I thought when I, I took that step back and asked myself, what do I really want to do? I knew that in order to write a book, I would have to really research how to do that and research the content of it. So I thought that that would be a challenge and, and a fun one. Uh, I also knew that I wanted to incorporate genetics to some degree in the book in a way that people could um, find actually uh, engaging and understandable. And it added to the mystery of the story. So it's not heavy duty genetics, but I thought I, uh, since I, that is the field that I came from and scientists don't always do a super great job at explaining what they do. I thought that I, that's one thing I could do with this book. Well, now that's an ambitious project to write something genetics for beginners. Um, 
<laughs> because I think, like you said, if you got a little too heavy into it, you would just lose your readers real quick. Yeah. yeah? Absolutely. So I have the protagonist being a, um, a geneticist, and she uses Iceland's DNA database to solve crimes. But the way I describe it is very uh, accessible. And, um, and, and I have, you know, had many, much, a lot of feedback in terms of how much people have really enjoyed that aspect of the book. What genre is this book in? So it is a mystery thriller. It is, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, it's about a geneticist, an Icelandic geneticist that uses the data, DNA database to solve crimes, not the least of which uh, is the, was the disappearance of her young brother 20 years ago. And she has always felt responsible for his disappearance uh, because she was tasked with looking out for him that day. And 20 years on, she starts to receive clues drawn from these medieval manuscripts as to his whereabouts. And so she's got to not, not only use the DNA database, but try to solve these clues from the Icelandic manuscripts in order to find her brother. So it's kind of a fast paced page turner and... Um, it, it incorporates a lot, as I said, of genetics and medieval manuscripts and plant poisons and all sorts of goodies. Why Iceland? Is it, you have some connection to Iceland? I uh, am not Icelandic. I would, I would, I like to believe that I am, but I'm not. <laughs> um, I, when I first decided to write the book. I knew that Iceland did have this DNA database. So I thought I would just go to Iceland and learn more about the DNA database. That was quite a number of years ago. And uh, I've been back virtually every year since because I've just fallen in love with the culture and the people and just how quirky everything is there and the, the landscapes and, and truly how generous uh, people are with their time um, when they knew that I was interested in the DNA database, um, I was, you know, it's a country of about 350,000 people, so it's quite small, and everyone virtually knows everyone else. So I was at a hotel, and I had just mentioned that I'd like to go see this, you know, uh, the laboratory where the DNA database is housed. He said, oh, and I know the CEO of that company. Let me just pick up the phone. So he picked up the phone, and the next day I was taking a tour of the database. Wow. Yeah, another, and then I had mentioned to someone else, because Icelandic, Iceland does have these um, very treasured medieval manuscripts that were written in the 13th century, and I had mentioned that it would just be so cool to be able to see one of those. And... Not surprisingly, uh, someone knew someone else who was head of the uh, institute and offered um, the op me the opportunity to go down into their vault and put on these white gloves and leaf through these 13th century manuscripts, which was amazing opportunity. So I... I just feel Iceland is a country that has so much to offer in terms of its, you know, innovation and creativity. And uh, it's just a lovely culture. How much of the actual country can you access by roads? I mean, are there roads all the way around it or? Yes. Is it, there, yeah. There is uh, something called the Ring Road. Uh, because it is roughly circular, the country, with a few offshoots. Um, so you can drive around the ring road. It will take you, you know, if you just drove it straight, it would take you a couple of days to do. Uh, and then there are lots of offshoots. Um, you know, some of the roads are pretty sketchy, and the weather is very unpredictable. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of white-knuckled it quite a number of times, but the Icelanders are used to it, you know, like, uh, and it's like right now, this is 
coming to the darkest time of year when this the sun is virtually only shining for three or four hours a day. So you add that on top of, you know, unexpected blizzards and freezing cold weather, and it's really a country of extremes. But they're so re resilient, and I, I admire the Icelanders tremendously. One of the uh, genres on your bio that I wanted to bring up was Scandinavian noir. Um, is that like Ingmar Bergman films? Is that in that realm? Yeah, I guess that that in terms of the film films that would that would be included in in that. I uh, I think I was probably referring to a lot of the uh, literature that's been written out of Norway and Sweden. Um, predominantly okay. like, is Iceland considered Scandinavia or not yes they are. yes it is yeah. Iceland was founded a thousand years ago by Norwegians that uh, stopped by Ireland on their way to pick up a few uh, unsuspecting females to act <laughs> as slaves and yeah mothers <laughs> so um it's really um they are the genetics is predominantly derived from norway and ireland but yeah you could uh, consider iceland to be scandinavian so any plans to write another book yes i am in the process of writing another book it's a bit of a historical fiction it's also set in iceland but in a different area uh, there was a true event that happened in the 1600s where the Barbary pirates from North Africa invaded an island in the south of Iceland and took 400 Icelanders as slaves back to North Africa. And um, it's going to be a mystery in terms of... Uh, it, it, it basically... Uh, the story goes between uh, Iceland and North Africa, and then these bones and a manuscript are found underground in uh, what was New Amsterdam in New York. And Brinja, the protagonist, has to piece, piece all this together to figure out what, what the meaning of it is. Well, Sarah, we do have to kind of wind this down a bit. Do you have a website that you want to give out that people can come check out your book, check you out? Sure. Um, it's virtually my name, www.sarawinoker, and it's S-A-R-A-W-I-N-O-K-U-R.com. Okay. I have a Facebook page, Instagram. You can find my book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I'm going to show you the cover. Yes, I please. Love the cover. This is it. It's called Double Blind, the Icelandic Manuscript Murders. It's out now. It's available. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's been out since okay. March, late March. How's, Just about when how's it doing? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. How's it doing? It's doing very well. I, I, I don't know if it's because people have more time to read now or if... Uh, if they're just more aware of of the book, and it, it is a it's it's a fun and interesting book. Great. Well, I encourage everybody to go get a copy or order a copy. And my guest is Sarah Winoker. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's nice meeting Thank you. you. So much. Yeah.